Hey folks, Michael Warren here from Essential Guitar Lessons and let's learn all about the pentatonic scales. Before we get into it, I'll quickly talk you through what this lesson will cover. So we'll start with why we learn the scales, why we must learn all the five shapes, the five shapes of the minor pentatonic scale, what finger to use, what frets, how to pick them and their names, and why they're called what they are. And we'll also go over them using a metronome. We'll go over the five shapes of the major pentatonic scale, how to play them and what their names are, and then we'll look at how to change keys using the scales, pentatonic theory for the major and minor pentatonics, different patterns you can use while playing the scales, we'll do a few licks, we'll do octave pentatonics, you'll learn how to join them together or how to move between the scales, we'll do some basic improvising and how to use all the techniques you've learned so far, We'll look at some stretch pentatonics, three note per string pentatonics and all five positions, three note per string octave pentatonic scales, three note per string pentatonic scales without repeating notes and finish with some alternate pentatonic scales. So there is a lot there, but just practice it in parts. Learn one or two scales, practice them for a week or two, then move on. Or just learn the parts you're interested in. I'll put time codes in the description for you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and give me a like for lessons and songs every week. This really helps me out. If you're having any problems, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So let's make a start. So first things first, you can learn these on an electric or an acoustic guitar. We use them on both. Now when I started guitar, I was given a few of these scars, but I didn't know what to do with them. So it got pretty boring fast. So in this lesson, you'll learn how and why we use them. So we use them for solos and riffs. If you know the notes to play, you don't have to guess what works. And it makes it easier to work out solos, write your own solos, and how to improvise in key and over chords. Now pentatonic scars are not the only scars and techniques we use to solo, but it gives you a good starting point and you'll use them for the whole time you're playing. They're not something you learn and then forget as you learn more scales, where we use them all the time. Now, if you don't want to do any solo playing, they're still good, and I teach all my students the positions. It helps with being able to move your fingers quicker, which helps with playing chords and power chords. You'll be amazed. Some of my students don't want to learn them, and it always takes them longer to pick up other techniques. It forces you to use all your fingers, which will build strength in your hand to help with bar chords. So they are great for all aspects of playing. Now, if you're using them for solo playing, it is important to learn all five shapes so you can solo over the whole neck. As a beginner, we normally learn one or two, then stop. So try and learn them all. Now, when you start, just learn them in one or two keys. Then when you feel comfortable with them, try them in different keys. It gets quite confusing if you keep changing the keys you're playing. So as you learn them, do them on the same frets that I show you. So throughout this course, I'll just keep my guitar on a clean sound, just so it sounds similar to yours, and later on we'll put some gain on. So a pentatonic scale is a five note scale, and we just repeat those five notes as we play up and down the scale. So the first scale everyone learns is the first position A minor pentatonic scale, and that's what we'll start with. Now it's called the A minor because we're starting on the A note, which is the fifth fret on the top E string and we call that the root note. And we're playing five notes from the A natural minor scale. So we call it the first position because that's the first note of the A minor scale. Don't worry too much about this, we'll cover this in the theory section. Just remember it's called the first position A minor pentatonic scale, and that's the important part to remember at this time. Now we could play all these scales just using two fingers. <laughs> But we want to use all our fingers to build strength and not avoid using our little finger. So we're basically using a finger per fret there. So follow me as to what fingers to use. Now we're also going to use alternate picking because if you want to play them faster later on in your playing, it's too hard to use all down strokes and you'll just have to relearn how to do them. So you're best off starting with alternate picking straight away. So why we're doing that is we don't want to waste a stroke. So if I'm 
playing the first note as a down and then the second note as a down, I've got to come up to get ready for that down. So we may as well use that stroke there. So now let's run over the scale, what fingers to use and how to pick it. So it's all going to be alternate picking down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So this is our first position, A minor pentatonic scale. So starting with our first finger on the fifth fret on the E string, we do a down pick. Then we go to our little finger on the E string, eighth fret, and we do an up pick. So we have down, up, five, eight, first finger, little finger, or fourth finger. Then we go to the A string, first finger, fifth fret, a down pick. Still on the A string, seventh fret, third finger, an up pick. And then we do the same on the D string, first finger, fifth fret, a down pick, third finger, seventh fret, an up pick on the D string, then we go to the G string, first finger on the fifth fret, down pick, third finger on the seventh fret, an up pick, then on the B string, first finger, fifth fret, a down pick, then we're going to use our little finger on the eighth fret on the B string, an up pick, then the same on the E string, first finger, fifth fret, a down pick, and then our little finger on the 8th fret and up pick. Now we only play that last one once and then we come back down using the same fingers, same frets and the same alternate picking. So our first finger back to the 5th fret, a down pick on the E string, little finger back on the 8th fret, on the B string and up, first finger on the 5th fret, a down on the B string, third finger on the 7th fret on the G string, up, First finger on the fifth fret, a down pick. Same on the D string, up on the seventh fret, third finger. On the first finger, fifth fret, on the D string, a down. Third finger, seventh fret, on the A string, and up. First finger on the fifth fret, a down on the A string, and then finishing on the E string, little finger, an up pick on the eighth fret and our first finger, fifth fret, a down pick there. So whether we're going up or down the scale, we're using the same fingers for each fret. And you can see on that one, whenever we're playing the fifth fret, I'm using my first finger. Whenever I'm playing the eighth fret, my little finger, and the seventh fret, my third finger there, and the picking never changes. So down, up, 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 down. So when you finish, you want to make sure you're finishing on a down stroke, otherwise we've gone wrong somewhere in the scale. So coming back down the scale, as we said, same fingers, same picking. Really careful, don't play that last note twice because it will mess your picking up. We don't want down, up on the B string, E down, up, and then a down on the E string again because then you'll be playing it all wrong. You'll still be playing the scale right, but your picking will go out there and it'll make it harder later on to build up some speed. So let's play that slowly now. So five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, and five. Now a couple of tips with this one. Don't play that last note twice because it'll mess up your picking. We don't want to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. We just want to play it once there at the end and come back down the scale. Now also try not to bend the strings as you're playing them or pulling them down. We don't want this. Now that can be a little hard to see if you're doing that. I was exaggerating that then. So you can sit in front of a mirror and do that and see if you're pulling them down. Now that's happening, it's normally because you're struggling to get up to the top. So make sure you make a puppet with your hand, thumb straight at the back. We don't want our fingers off to the side like this. Makes it really difficult to get up to the top strings then. So try and straighten your hand as much as possible. And as we're playing down the scale, we don't have to move our thumb up and down. That just stays in the one spot. So we don't want that coming over the top. We want that to line up with about the top of the neck. And that depends on your hand size there as well. So it'll be there or about. It doesn't have to be exact, but we're not moving it up and down. Also, try and keep a gap 
between the neck of the guitar and your fingers. When we get down the bottom, we don't want our hand touching the bottom of the guitar or the neck of the guitar. That way our fingers will get all bunched up here. It makes it really hard again to stretch. So try and keep your hand down. And by doing that, you put your wrist down. So if your wrist is up and you're at the bottom of the scale, you're really gonna struggle to reach up to that eighth fret. So drop your whole wrist down. Like we were playing a bar chord, we drop our wrist down. Open chords are different. We're right up here. Your wrist can be up with an open chord. When we're doing the scales, wrist right down. That way my fingers aren't bunching up right at the bottom of the neck. So we want a gap between our finger and the neck of the guitar there. And that'll help you stretch and get more stretch if you need to later on. Now also as we're playing, once you've played one note, place your finger down on the next note and lift your first finger up or the finger you've just played. We don't have to hold that down and get that one there as well. I find most beginners really struggle to get that stretch, especially on that E string. So once we've played it, play the next note and lift your finger off. Now what we don't want to do there, we want it to sound really smooth. We don't want a staccato feel. So we don't want a real stop starty feel. So we don't want to play a note, stop it, then go for the next note, stop that. We want them all to join together. So we play the note. Then as soon as I put my next finger down, I'm playing that one and lifting my first finger off at the same time. That way it's all joining together. Do the same as soon as I play the next note, my finger comes off at the same time, so or just before. So you can see we get that nice and smooth there. build your speed up if you're doing that just nice and smooth and each note runs into the next so when you first start that may feel really difficult to do you got to worry about your alternate picking what finger to use so just go really slowly it doesn't matter how long it takes and what we want to do is make sure we're doing it the same way every single time using the same fingers same frets and same picking that way we're building muscle memory as we're going and the more you do it the easier it becomes now it's good practice to use a metronome so you can download an app for those, they're all free, or you can just get the old school metronome that'll click, which I'll be using. Now they help you to see how you're improving, so you just start slowly and build your speed up. So you may start on 60 beats per minute, so let's try that. So what we're going to do is play a note every time it clicks, and give yourself a count of four before you start. One, two, three, four. So nice and slow. Our ultimate picking stays the same. Make sure you're using the right fingers. Just once on that last note. Now if you're still finding 60 beats per minute too fast, that's okay. Drop it down to 40 and try it there. And if that's still too quick for you, keep practicing it without the metronome and then go back and try it with the metronome. Now a good speed for those is about 300 beats per minute. Now we can do that faster if we want. So let's give that a go now. So I've got my metronome set on 150 because it doesn't go to 300, it only goes to 200. So I'm gonna play two notes every time it clicks. So a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So let's give that a go now. One, two, three, four. So if we can get it up to that speed, that's great. And let's do one more trying at 400 beats per minute. Again, the metronome set on two, so we're going to do two on each click. So one, two, three, four. Now it doesn't matter how long it takes you to build your speed. It may take weeks, months, years. That's okay. Practice that for a week or two, try and remember the pattern and slowly build your speed up. Now you don't have to have that one at 300 beats per minute before you learn the next position. We build the speed up of each scale all together. So just remember it, try to play it with no mistakes, getting our alternate picking right, using the correct fingers and the correct frets, 
and you'll slowly start to build that up there. So now let's learn the second position, A minor pentatonic scale. We'll go over why it's called that after we learn how to play it. So this time we're starting on the 8th fret with our 2nd finger on the E string, we play down. Then our little finger on the 10th fret, we play up. Then on the A string we're going back to the 7th fret, we play down with our 1st finger. Little finger on the 10th fret and we play up. Same on the next string, our D string, 1st finger 7th fret down. Little finger 10th fret up. To the G string, 1st finger on the 7th fret down. Then we're going to go to our third finger on the ninth fret here, up. Then we're going to change back to our second finger on the B string, on the eighth fret, down. Tenth fret with our little finger, up. On the bottom E string, second finger again, eighth fret, down. Tenth fret with our little finger, up. And coming back is exactly the same. So we go back to the eight, ten, eight, nine, seven, ten. 7, 10, 7, 10, 8 and hopefully we finish with our down pick there. Now all the tips apply to this scale here, you try and drop your wrist down, don't have your fingers on an angle, we want to make sure we're only playing that last note once, we don't play that two times and all with our alternate picking. So let's try that slowly again. 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, and 8, and let's do that a little bit quicker. Once again, just build that slowly with your metronome, so now you've got two scales to practice. Like I said, you don't have to be on 300 beats per minute before you start playing that second one. You might have them both at 100, so you play your first position at 100 beats per minute, up and down. Then go to your second position and do the same thing at 100 or 120, whatever you're up to there and then each week make it a bit faster or each day depending on how much you practice. Okay now that you know these two positions let's see how they join together. So you can see that they overlap each other. The second note on each string, so the 8th fret, 7, 7, 7, 8 and 8, so the second note of each string of our first position is the first note of each string of the second position. So we've got 8, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8. If I go over my second position, I've got 8, 7, 7, 7, 8 and 8. So it's overlapping there on the 8, 7, 7, 7, 8 and 8. And this is going to happen to each scale. It's going to overlap again on the next one. So all we want to do is we're playing the scales and practicing and see that it overlaps and we're repeating that same note. So we're playing the second note of each string of the first position. We're playing that as the first note of each string of the second position. Now that does sound a little confusing, but as you're playing it, you'll be able to see what you're doing there. Now that you know that, Let's have a look at the notes we are playing. So when I'm playing the first position, I'm just playing A, C, D, E, and G. And then I repeat those notes again. A, C, D, E, G, A, and we're going to get to C here. Then we come back and it's exactly the same. So same notes coming back again there. Now we'll have a look at the next position. I'm playing exactly the same note. So if I have a look at my second position, the only difference is I'm starting from the C. I'm not starting from the A. So we call that the second degree of the scales or the second position. So now the notes I'm playing on my second position are C, D, E, G, and we put the A at the end and we just repeat those. C, D, E, G, A, C, D and same coming back there. So I'm playing exactly the same notes. I've just taken the first note and stuck it at the end there. So I'm just playing A, C, D, E and G in the first position. 
then I'm repeating those notes starting from the C in the second position. So that's why we have five positions, we have five starting notes, A, C, D, E and G, and each scale will start from the next note along and we just take the first one and stick it at the back. So now that's what we call that one we just did, the second position, because it's starting from the second note of the scale, or what we say the second degree of the scale there. Now we'll go through this a little bit more in the theory, but let's jump in to the third position, A minor pentatonic scale now. So for the rest of the scales, I'm not going to go over the picking, that always stays the same, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. All our tips stay the same and we don't repeat that last note. And remember, drop your hand down if you're struggling to get to the top E string. So our third position is going to start with our second finger on the 10th fret, 12th fret with our little finger, and then we do the same on the A string. Second finger, 10th fret, little finger on the 12th fret, D string, second finger, 10th fret, little finger, 12th fret. Then on the G string, we're going to play the 9th fret with our first finger, little finger on the 12th fret. Now we have a position shift here, so we're going to move up and play the 10th fret on the B string with our first finger, and then the 13th fret with our little finger, and then on the E string, first finger, we're going to use the 10th fret, and then our third finger, 12th fret coming back is exactly the same. So you're going to go back to your little finger on the G string 12th fret as you're coming back. So we're using the same fingers and doing the same picking. So slowly, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 9, 12, 10, 13, 10, 12. And coming back is exactly the same there. So let's try that a little bit quicker. So that one's a little bit harder now. We've got this position shift here. Now there are other ways you can finger that and if you find a better way for you, do it that way, but try and keep a finger per fret there. And as before, you can see that overlaps. So we have the 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 10, which is the same as our second position. 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 10. So again, overlapping like the first position did. So now let's have a look at the fourth position. This time we're going to start on the 12th fret with our first finger. And then our little finger, 15th fret. Then the same on the A string. 12th fret, first finger, little finger, 15th fret. D string, first finger, 12th fret. This time third finger, 14th fret. Same on the G string, 12, first finger, third finger 14. Now it changes here, we're going to use our second finger on the 13th fret, our little finger on the 15, our first finger on the 12 on the E, and then our little finger on the 15 on the E, and coming back is again exactly the same. There. So let's try that slowly as well. 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 13, 15, 12, 15, and coming back is the same. So that fourth position is similar to the first position. There's only two little shifts there. Instead of playing the 14, we're playing the 15. Instead of playing the 12, we're playing the 13. So don't worry too much about that. Just try and remember the shape. Now we have one more. We're going to do the fifth position. So as we said, this one's starting on the G and it's overlapping again onto that fourth position like the fourth position did on the third. So this time we're going to come right up the neck, start on our second finger on the 15th fret, little finger on the 17, same on the A string, second finger 15, little finger 17. Now our first finger 14 on the D string, little finger 17, G string, first finger 14, little finger 17 now on the b string second finger on the 15 little finger on the 17 and on the e string second finger 15 little finger 17 and coming back there again is exactly the same now we can also do what they call the octave of that so we're going to play exactly the same notes but we're going to come back down the neck 
So we're playing the octave. So that note there's a G. That note there's a G as well. So G A G A. So we could also play three five three five two five two five three five three five. Using exactly the same fingers and the same picking. And I've just played the octave of that. I've come back one octave and played it there. So it's exactly the same scale, same fingers, same notes. So same scale, just an octave lower there. You can hear they sound exactly the same. Now from there, for my fifth position, I can go back to the first position again. So I can come up to the 17th fret and I can play an octave up from the first position. So exactly the same fingers, same scale there. And that's what happens with them, they loop around. So once I get to the fifth position, and you can see the second note of each string is landing on the fifth fret. So that goes back to the first position there. So once I've finished the fifth position, I go straight back to the first position. So whatever note I've finished that fifth position on, whatever my little finger's on there, or the second note of each string, that's where my first position is gonna start again. So then I can go from there back to my second position and we're getting a little bit higher on the neck. But depending on what key we're in, if I was in the key of E minor, I can quite easily go back from the fifth to the fourth, the third and the second there as well. So they loop around. Once we get to the fifth, we go straight back to the first. And if we're going backwards, I can go from the first, back to the fifth, back to the fourth, back to the third there as well. So that is a lot to take in there. If you need to, watch this a few times, get the positions right, your fingering, your picking. Now I find the best way to practice these is to play just your first position, then go to your second position and do that one, and just move through each position until we get to the fifth position. And you can play that one, and if you want to, you can go back to the first position. But when you get to the end there, then go back. So we're going back to the fourth position, back to the third position. So we're gonna play up the neck and then play back there. As I said, just take your time. It takes a little bit to remember these and build the speed up. But that's the main part. We wanna remember the patterns. We also wanna get the picking right and we wanna remember the names as well. So they're all A minor pentatonic scars but we have the different positions. First position, second, third, fourth and fifth and you want to remember which one is which there. So as I said, this may take a bit of time. That's okay, just slowly build your speed up. Okay, now that you know the five positions of the minor pentatonic scale, you already know the five positions of the major pentatonic scale. They're the same, we just give them different names. So each scale now will have two names. Now I know that's a bit confusing at first, but when we go through the theory, this will make more sense. But let's dive a little deeper into it. So we play them exactly the same, using the same fingering and the same picking. So let's go over their names. We'll start with the second position A minor pentatonic scale. So we have our first position. And then we had our second position there, starting on the eighth fret with our second finger. Now we also call that the first position C major pentatonic scale. So eight, 10, seven, 10, seven, 10, seven, nine, eight, 10, eight, 10, coming back is exactly the same. So it uses five notes from the C major scale, and we're starting on the first note of the scale, the root note, which is C. So that scale now is called the second position A minor pentatonic scale, and it's also called the first position C major scale, or C major pentatonic scale. So it has two names. Again, at the moment, don't worry too much if that seems weird. It'll make sense when we look at the theory. Just remember the scale is called the second position A minor pentatonic scale and also the first position C major pentatonic scale. Depending on what key we're in determines what name we will call it. 
So if I was playing a minor chord or playing a minor key, I would call them the first, second, third, fourth, fifth position minor pentatonic scale. If I was playing a major chord or playing in a major key, I would call them the first, second, third position major pentatonic scale. So if I'm playing an A minor or in the key of A minor, I would call it the first position A minor pentatonic scale the if I was playing, say, a C major, or in the key of C major, I would call this one the first position C major pentatonic scale. So let's go over the other ones now. So let's take our third position A minor pentatonic scale. Now we're also going to call that the second position C major, because that's now our first position there. So now we have our second position, C major. Same pattern as the third position. Now our fourth position, A minor. We're gonna call that one the third position, C major. So again, two names, same scale, same fingering, same picking there. Then our fifth position, A minor. which we can also play back down the neck. We're gonna call that one the fourth position, C major. So again, two names. We have fifth position, A minor, and fourth position, C major. And then our first position, A minor, we're gonna call that one the fifth position, C major. So you can see we're playing exactly the same shapes. We've just given them two names now. So let's run over the names we have. The first position, C major, is also the second position, A minor pentatonic. The second position, C major, is the same as the third position, A minor pentatonic. Fourth position, A minor, is the same as the third position, C major. The fifth position, A minor, is the same as the fourth position, C major. And the first position, A minor, is the same as the fifth position, C major. So now you know the five positions of the A minor pentatonic scale and the five positions of the C major pentatonic scale. Now remember, they join exactly the same way. So they're all joining up using the note from the previous scale, exactly the same as the A minor, but now we're using C major, we're just calling them two different names now. So we want to remember the shapes, what fingers to use, how to pick them, and the two different names for each scale. Now with these scales, over time we want to be able to remember them all as one big block. That way I can move between them really easily and up and down the neck. Again, that takes time to do and we have to learn them as five different positions. They'd just be too hard to learn all the notes on the neck. So over time, as you're playing them, try and visualize the frets you're playing and how they all join together. And again, over time, we want to see it as one big block instead of five separate scales, just as all the notes we can use in A minor or all the notes we can use in C major. So now that we know the scales of the minor and the major pentatonic scale, let's learn how to change keys. Now this is really easy. The first one we played was the first position A minor pentatonic scale. So fifth fret, starting on the A. So I would say that's in the key of A minor, we're just playing the notes or certain notes of the A natural minor scale. So if I want to play them in the key of G minor, I start that first position on G. So G is the third fret on our top E string. Now I play the shape exactly the same as I played it here, but now I've come back and I'm starting on G. So it'd be three, six, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, six. But you can see the shape hasn't changed. It's exactly the same. So now I'm playing the G minor first position pentatonic scale. So now I call that the first position G minor pentatonic scale because I'm starting on the G. 
Now all the other scale positions move with it. So I've moved that first position down two frets. So the second position started on the eighth fret before on our A minor. So I moved that down two frets and now it's gonna start on the sixth fret there and the shape is gonna be exactly the same. I'm just playing it two frets down and they all move the same. So I've moved that first one down two frets. So my third position, I'm also gonna move down two frets. So it was the 10, now it's coming back to the eight. Shape stays exactly the same there. So whatever I do to that first position, I do the same to all the rest of them, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. If I move it up two frets, I move them all up two frets. So let's say I played the B minor, because now I'm starting on the B first position. So again, the shape is exactly the same as our first position shape. Now I've moved that up two frets, so I have to move my second position up two frets again, and now it's starting on the 10th fret, but it's the same shape. I've just moved it up two frets. So as you can see, we're picking them up as a block. We're not just moving one of the scars, we're moving all five, or either moving them up the neck or down the neck. You can go back five frets or up six frets, it doesn't matter there. And whatever our starting note is on the first position, that's what key we're in. Now the majors is exactly the same. Whatever I do to one, I do to all of them. So my first position C major, I was starting on the eighth fret. So if I want to play a first position A major, I just start on A, which is the fifth fret, and then I play that same shape. I've just moved the back three frets. One, two, three. So I do that with all the rest of them as well. I do all five of them, move them back three frets. So my second position, C major, which is now A major, will now start on the seventh fret there. So you can see it works exactly the same as the minors. We pick them all up as a block and move them up and down the neck. So changing keys is pretty easy. Just pick them all up and move them up and down the neck. Just remember the names of the scars, whether I'm playing major or minor. I'm playing the first position major, I'm starting on that first position shape. If I'm playing the first position minor, I'm starting on my minor shape there, my first position. Now if you're solo, you don't have to start from the first position, you can start in any position you want to, just make sure you're in key there. So now let's tackle the theory. So finding the notes of a major pentatonic scale is easy. Take the major scale and take out the fourth and the seventh notes and you have a major pentatonic scale. So let's have a look at C major. We have C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. If we take out the fourth and the seventh notes, we're getting rid of the F and the B. And now we have the first position C major pentatonic scale, C, D, E, G, and A. So we play over the scale, we can go over the notes there. C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D. And coming back is the same there. So now if we look at the second position C major pentatonic scale, all we do is take the first note and put it at the end. So we take the C off, stick that at the end, and we have D, E, G, A, C. So if I play my second position, I'm starting on the D, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, and coming back is the same. So then my third position is the same. I take the first note, the D, and I stick it at the end, and I have E, G, A, C, and D. And that's the position we end up playing using those notes. Then the fourth position, I take the E and I stick it at the back. And then the fifth position, I do the same. Take the G and stick it at the back. So that's why we call them first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. You're just starting each scale from the next spot in the scale. So we're taking the first note and sticking it at the end. So if I play all five positions, I'm only playing five different notes. So this works with all major scars. If I was to take E major, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, and D sharp. Take out the fourth and the seventh, I end up with E, 
F sharp, G sharp, B and C sharp. So all I have to do is play that exact same pattern of first position, major pentatonic scale, but now I'm starting it on E, and that would be the notes I'm playing there. I'm playing E, F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, and then just repeating those notes. So I don't even need to know the notes as long as I remember the names of the scales and the patterns. Now it does help if you do know the names of the notes, it makes it easier to improvise later on. So to wrap that up, we take our major scale, we get rid of the fourth and the seventh, and we end up with our pentatonic scale, our first position. If I want to know the notes to the second position, I just take the first note and put it at the end and the same as we're going up. So to find the notes of a minor pentatonic scale is just as easy. Take a natural minor scale and take out the second and the sixth notes. So A minor, the notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Take out the second and the sixth, and we have A, C, D, E, and G. And that gives you the notes to the first position A minor pentatonic scale. So A, C, D, E, G, A, C, D, E, G, A, C, and the same coming back there. We do exactly the same as the major pentatonics. If we want to get the second position, we take the first note and we put that at the end. So we have C, D, E, G, and A. C, D, E, G, A, and it's the same all the way there. So you can see they're the same notes as the C major first position pentatonic scale. So once again, you can play up and down the whole neck just using five notes. So you can see the minor is just as easy. We're just taking away the second and the sixth note for the first position. And then for the second position, just take that first note, put it at the end, the third position, do the same, fourth and fifth. So it's just as easy as the major pentatonics. Now let's have a look at why they're the same shapes with different names. So in music, we have what they call relative majors and minor keys, which means they both have the same key signature. So the same sharps and flats. So if I was to take C major, I have C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Its relative minor is A minor. It has the same notes just starting from A. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. If I were to take G, the G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp, its relative minor would be E minor, exactly the same notes starting from E. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and D. So you can see the same notes just starting from E. So you take the major scale and start from the sixth note, and that gives you its relative minor scale. So if we were to look at the notes of the C major pentatonic scale, they're just C, D, E, G, and A. You can see they're the same notes as the A minor pentatonic scale, but we're just starting from the A. So A, C, D, E, and G. So if you're playing the same notes, so that's why the shapes are the same. We're playing exactly the same notes. We're just calling them two different things. So we're just starting from a different position. That's why the shapes are the same. Now there's also an easier way to do this on the guitar if you can't remember all the notes of the scales. So let's say I know my C major first position and I want to know what its relative minor is. All I do is go back three frets, one, two, three, and it's my fifth position C major is its relative minor, so it's the A minor there. So the first position of the C, its relative minor, is the fifth position of the C major pentatonic scale. So again, if I was playing A major pentatonic scale, I go back three, one, two, three, go to my fifth position. So we are playing an F sharp there, so it would be F sharp minor would be its relative minor. Now we can do that from minor to major as well. If I was playing the E minor first position, so I'm just starting on E, its relative major would be the second position, so G, starting on G. So it's quite easy to do on the neck of the guitar, we're just going from minor to major, first position to second position, that gives us our relative major from the minor, or from major to minor, just go to our fifth position there. 
So that's the theory to the pentatonic scales. It's not too hard, but just taking a major scale or a minor scale and taking out certain notes. And then if I want to do the next position, I'm just moving the first note to the back. Now it does make it much easier if you know the theory to the major scales, but that's another lesson. So in this section, I'll show you some different patterns you can use, some licks and some octave pentatonic scales, and we'll look at how to use them. So let's do some patterns you can use with the pentatonic scales. If you're doing a solo, it can get a little bit boring if you're just playing up and down the scale. So we can use patterns to make it more interesting for the listener. So let's start with a group of threes. We're just gonna do these all on the first position, but as you're practicing, you wanna practice them in all the positions. So we're gonna start on the eighth foot on the E string. I'm gonna play eight, five, eight on the E. Then we're gonna to come to the fifth fret on the A string and play that once, back to the eighth fret on the E string and then back to the fifth fret on the A string. Then on the A string we play seven, five, seven. So, so far we have. And then we go to the D string, five, back to the A string, seven, back to the five on the D string. Then on the D string, seven, five, seven. On the G string, five, back to seven on the D, five on the G, and on the G string, seven, five, seven. So hopefully you can see the patterns just repeating over and over again here. On the B string, five, G string, seven, B string, five, and then the B, eight, five, eight, and then on the E string, five, back to eight on the B, five on the E and E string eight, five, eight. So slowly. Now coming back is exactly the same. We have eight, five, eight on the E string and then five on the E string, eight on the B string, five on the E string the B string, eight, five, eight, and then on the B string, five, G string, seven, back to five on the B string, then on the G string, seven, five, seven, on the G string, five, D string, seven, G string, five, back to the D string, seven, five, seven, D string, five, A string, seven, back to the five on the D, a string seven five seven back to the five on the a string eight on the e string five on the a string eight five eight on the e string so let's play that slowly now And let's try that one more time, a little bit quicker. So that's a group of threes. So now let's try a group of fours. This time we're gonna play up four notes and then we're gonna go back to the second note of the scale, play up four, then go to the third note of the scale, play up four. So on the E string, five, eight. On the A string, five, seven. Then we go back to the eighth foot on the E string. A string, five, seven, D string, five. Now we go back to the A string, five, seven, D string, five, seven. Then back to the A string, seven. On the D string, five, seven, and G string, five. Then we're jumping back to the D string, five, seven, G string, five, seven. Jump back to the D string on the seven. G string, five, seven, B string, eight. Then we're jumping back to the fifth fret on the G, playing five, seven, B, five, eight. Then we're coming back to the seventh fret on the G, seven and then on the b five eight e five and then we're jumping back to the fifth fret on the b string we play five eight e string five eight now coming back to the same we just play four notes 
and then we come back to the second note of the scar. So we're coming back to the fifth fret on the E string. One, two, three, four. Then come back to the eighth fret on the B string. One, two, three, four. Fifth fret on the B string. One, two, three, four. And so on there. So you can see how that is going. There, so let's try that nice and slow to start with. jump either up or back on the same fret each time. So let's try that a little bit quicker. So going up and down is the same there again. That one's a little bit harder because we're jumping from the same fret each time. So now let's do a group of fives. Hopefully you can see what's happening here. This time we're going to play five notes. One, two, three, four, five, and then go from the second note of the scale and play another five there. So we have the fifth fret on the E string. We play five, eight on the A string, five, seven, and then on the D string, five. Then we go back to the eighth fret on the E. We play five, sorry, eight on the E, five, seven on the A, five, seven on the D, then we go back to the A string, we have 5, 7, D string, 5, 7 and 5 on the G string, then we come back to the 7th foot on the A, we have 7, D string, 5, 7, G string, 5, 7, then we're coming back to the 5th fret on the D, we have 5, 7, G, 5, 7 and 5 on the B, back to the D string, we have seven G string five, seven B string five, eight. Then back to the G string five, seven B five, seven and eight on the E. And then we're coming back to the G string, seventh fret, seven B five, eight, E five, eight. And coming back is the same there. So we're playing five notes and then going to the second note. try a group of sixes and we're going to do this a little bit differently. Now remember practice these on all your different patterns there, all your different positions. So this time we're going to play six notes down and then we're going to come back to the next string and play six notes from there. So we have E string 5, 8, A string 5, 7, D string 5, 7. So we've played six notes. Now he's going to jump back to the A string and play six notes again. 5, 7 on the D string, 5, 7 on the G string, 5, 7, come back to the D string, 5, 7, G string, 5, 7, B string, 5, 8, come back to the G string, 5, 7, 5, 8, and E string, 5, 8, coming back is the same, go back 6 notes, then go to the B string, 6 notes, G string, 6 notes, D string, 6 notes, there, so slowly... So this one's a little bit different now. We're playing six notes and then just coming back a streak. Now you could also do it the other way we did it. We, you could play six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then come back to the second note and do the same there if you wanted to. So these are just different ideas, different patterns to get you going. So let's do one more. So 
this time we're going to be using a little bit of legato there. So this time we're starting on the A string, we're going to do a hammer on and a pull off this time from 5 to 7 back to 5. Back to the 8th foot on the E, 5 on the A, 7 on the A, 5 on the D, back to 7 on the A, and that's the pattern we're going to use. So. Then we do the same thing on the D string, 5, 7, 5, hammer on pull off, back to 5 on the A string, 5, 7, D, G, 5, and back to 7 on the D. So. And the G string, 5, 7, 5, back to 5, uh, sorry, 7 on the D, 5, 7 on the G, 5 on the B, back to 7 on the D, and then the same on the B string, 5, 8, 5, this time hammer and pull off back to 7 on the G, 5, 7 on the B, 5 on the E, back to the 5 on, uh, sorry, the 8 on the B there, and then we just go backwards doing the same thing. So slowly. another pattern there, something a little bit different using legato. Now with all these patterns, try and keep the alternate picking as you're going as well and as you're practicing. And as we said, practice them in all the different positions. So now let's try a few little quick licks just using the pentatonic scale. So we'll do some nice easy ones just so you can see what we're doing. So we'll start with... So we're going to start with... Five, hammer on to seven on the D string, and then just play the five on the G string. So you can do this slow or quick, or you can repeat it there. So we think of that as an idea. We're doing a hammer on on one string and then playing the string underneath. So I could use the same scale, that first position, A minor pentatonic, but I can play it on the A and the D string. So if I hammer on to seven on the A and then play the five on the D. I could do it on the B and the E string, but remember we're playing the eighth fret on the B string, so I'd hammer off a five to eight and then play the five on the E. So I can take that idea and also use it in different positions. So I could play on the fifth position, A minor pentatonic scale on the top E string. Or I could come up to the eight and 10, second position, A minor pentatonic, and do the same there. So we think of the lick as an idea and work out different places we can play it. So let's do another simple one. So this time I'm starting on the seventh fret, pulling off to the fifth on the G string playing the 7 on the D and then back to the 5 on the G. Again, quickly or slowly. And I can do that in different positions as well. I can come back to my 5th position. If I'm on my G string, I'm playing the 5th fret and the 2nd fret, so I can pull off E, play the 5th fret on the D string and back to the 2nd fret. Back to my 1st position. I could come up to my fourth position. So again, think of them as an idea and use them in your different positions there. Now let's do a bend, another nice easy one. And then play the five. So all I'm doing is a bend on the seventh fret on the G. And then playing the five on the G. So seven, bend, five. Now again, I can try that in different positions. So that's just an octave there, bending on the 10th fret, back to the 8th fret there, or again, I can come up to my 4th position. So again, work out different places. We've got to be a little bit more careful with that, 
when we're bending. We don't want to try and bend on the fifth fret there. Now we can, but it'll be a tone and a half bend because we've got to get it to sound like the eighth fret. So anything that's just two frets apart, you can put your bend on there. Then we can do another one, a really common lick. Let's play that. So this time we're doing a bend and release on the seventh fret on the G. So bend it up, let it come back down and then pull off. So I'm doing three notes, just picking once. One, two, three. Then play the seventh fret on the D and back to the fifth fret on the G. Again, you can do this one in different positions. And you can also come up the octave and do the same thing. So I'm still playing that first position, but now I'm playing it up. So when I'm doing it on the B and the E string, if I'm on my first position, I have to bend on the eighth fret, pull off to the fifth. Now let's do one more. So these are just easy little licks to get you going and to see how to use the different positions. So let's do... This one's a nice easy one to get fast. We're doing eight pull off to five on the E string, eight pull off to five on the B string. And you can just bar the fifth fret on the E and the B. Now you can inside pick this or outside pick it. So inside picking is going down on the E and up on the B. So I'm inside the string. Or I can go outside picking so I can go up on the E and down on the B. Now there's no right or wrong there. Whatever feels better for you. I prefer the inside picking there. And again, I can do that in different positions. Come back to my fifth position. Up on the... A and E string. Or I come up again into my second position. So another nice and easy one. Now once you've got a few of those down, we can start to join them together as well. So they sound a little bit more like solo. So I could start with that first lick and go to the second lick. Like a part of the scale. just cut the licks joined together and they start to sound a little bit more like a solo rather than just playing a scale up and down. So there's a couple of little licks for you. The more licks you've got, the easier it is to improvise. So come up with your own, look at other people's, get friends to help as well there. Okay, so let's learn some octave pentatonic scars. We have five different shapes and these will get you moving diagonally across the fretboard instead of just straight up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first notes of a scale and repeat that pattern. So let's try starting on the fifth position now. We're going to play the third fret, the fifth fret on the E string and then the third and the fifth on the A string. Now we can use our first and third finger there because we're moving up and just using those two fingers. So the first four notes of the fifth position, A minor pentatonic scale. And then we're going to play the octave of those. So we're going to play the same four notes, but we're going to move it down, well, up two frets and onto the D string. So five, seven, five, seven. So we have three, five, three, five, five, seven, five, seven. Then we're going to do the octave of those. We're going to come up to eight, ten on the B and eight, ten on the E. So we're moving up three frets. So we do two frets, then three frets. So three, five, three, five, five, seven, five, seven. 8, 10, 8, 10, and coming back is exactly the same there. So we don't really, we could call that the fifth position if we want, but we're actually playing the fifth position, the first position, and the second position, so that gets you through the scale C. So hopefully you can see what's happening here, and we have another four of those. So on the next one, I can start on the first position, I can play five and eight on the E string and then five and seven on the D string. Now whatever I do on those two strings, whatever pattern I use, so that one I'm using my first and my fourth finger and then my first and my third, that's what I do on the next two strings. So I'm moving up two frets and I'm playing now seven and ten 
and then seven and nine. So you can see the pattern's exactly the same there. Then I move up three frets and I'm gonna be playing eight and 13, and I'm oh, sorry, 10 and 13 and 10 and 12 there. So the pattern stays the same and we're just playing the octave of those four notes so slowly. So you can see now we're working diagonally across the neck, not just straight up and down. Now we're missing that fifth note, and that's okay. These are just to get you through the different scales and get you practicing different ways of playing them. So the next one we have, we can start on the second position, and we're going to play eight, ten on the E, and then seven, ten on the A. And again, we're just going to move that shape up two frets. So we're going to come up to the ten, twelve on the D, and the nine, twelve on the G. Then we're going to move up to 13 on the B, play 15 and 12, 15 on the E. So slowly we have. So hopefully you can see what we're doing there. We're playing four notes, they're just doing the octave. Move up two frets, then move up three frets. So whatever shape you're doing on the first two strings, that shape continues. So the next one, starting on our third position, is going to be the same shape as starting on the fifth position. We'll have 10, 12, 10, 12 on the E and the A, and then the D string, 12, 14, G string, 12, 14, and then on the B string, 15, 17, E string, 15, 17. So that's another nice and easy one because it's the same shape. We're playing different notes, so we're starting on a different note. As we know with our pentatonics, we're always playing the same five notes, but here we're just playing four notes. So different notes, same shape. Then going to our fourth position, we have the same thing again, E string 12, 15, A string 12, 15. Then moving up to the D string, we have 14, 17, 14, 17. And then moving up again to the B string, we have 17, 20, and E string 17, 20. So there are five different shapes there about octave pentatonics. They're pretty easy to work out once you've done the first one or two. And again, just start slowly, build your speed up, work on one or two of them. Then when you've got those down, come back to the next ones. So now let's have a look at how to join the scales together. So we don't get stuck in one position, which is normally a big problem for beginners. How do we get from one scale to the next? If I've started improvising in my first position, how do I get into the next position from there? So one way we could do it is nice and easy is just use our octave scales like we were just doing. I could be playing five and seven on the D and the G, and then move up to eight and 10 takes me into my second position. So that's just part of the first one we did there. So five, seven, five, seven, eight, ten, and that gets me back into my second position there. So that's a nice, easy way to get around once you know those octave scales. If I was, say, in my third position, gets me into my fourth position nice and easily there. easy way. Another way is to do slide, so slide from one position to the next, which is really easy again. So if I was in my fifth position, in my A minor, I could finish on my G string on my second fret and then just slide up to the fifth fret, and now I'm in my first position there. So again, sliding up, I could slide up from my little finger and now I'm in the second position. and I'm back in my first position. Now I could slide up a couple of times there if I wanted to. Now I'm in my fourth position there. So that gives you slides up and down and you can just slide to start out. Just slide from 
one position to a second position and sliding back and that gets you between the two scales. When you start, don't try and slide between three and four and five. Just do two of the pick two of the patterns, so you might have the first and the second or the fifth and the first, and just try different things between those. Now another way to do it is to walk up. So if I start at my fifth position on my D string, I could play two and five, and then I could play the five again, but move to my first finger and have five and seven. That way I've gone from my fifth position to my first position, so two, five, five, seven. Gets me into my first position, and I could do the same here. Five and eight on my B string, play the five again, but move up to your first finger, and so play the eight again, move up to your first finger, and then 10. So I've just come from the D string, walked up, and finished in my second position again there. Now I can do backwards doing the same thing. I can, so I've done eight, five on the E string, gone back to my little finger, played the five again, and then five, three. Walk it up again, walk it back down. So just going between the fifth and the first there. So that gives you three really easy ways to move between the scars. Again, just practice with two of the scars, maybe the fifth and the first or the first and the second. So you've now got your octaves, you can slide between them or you can walk up between them. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this. These are just a couple of easy ways to start you out. Okay, let's try some improvising and start to use what we've learned. This will just be some basic ways to improvise. There's lots of different scales you can use and different ways to put them together. This is to get you started. So one way of improvising is if someone plays a minor chord, you can play the minor pentatonic scales over the top of it. So just start recording yourself strumming, say, an A minor chord and get used to hearing the scales over the chord. Just play them up and down. You can use any of the positions that are in that key. So if I was playing, say, an A minor chord, I could play the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth pentatonic scales over that chord. I don't just have to play the first position. So let's have a listen to that now. So I've just got an A minor chord playing there, and let's play over the scale so we can hear what they sound like now. First position, A minor pentatonic scale. See that works over the chord, I could use my second position. so you can hear what it sounds like with the chord and then we can use, start to use some of the licks we had so Here we just played the scales over that A minor and all the notes work. Now some will work better than others there because in the A minor chord we're using the first, the third and the fifth so those notes will work best in the scales but we can use all the other notes and just get used to playing up and down each scale and hearing how the notes sound because as you know we're just playing the same five notes. And then I did a little bit of improvising just using some of those simple licks we used and some of the slides as well. Now, if it helps if you know where the root notes are on each scale to give you a starting or an ending point. But don't worry too much about that at the moment. Just get used to listening to how they sound. So that was just a minor chord and I was playing the A minor first position. And then I used the fifth position and I also used the second position there. So I could do the same with the major pentatonic scales. 
If I play the G chord, I can just play the G major pentatonic scales over it. So this time my first position would be starting on my third fret and my first position G major pentatonic scale. So let's give that a go. Let's just strum the G chord and play the scales over the top of it so you can hear how they're going to sound. So now I'm just playing the G major chord and let's go through those positions to see how it sounds. Again, just play up and down the scales to see how they sound to you and get used to the sound. sounds a little bit sad. So now you should be able to see why they have two names. If I'm playing over say a C major chord I would call the first position C major scale. That's on a C chord in a major key. I would not call it the second position A minor scale even though it is the exact same scale. So that's our second position but because I'm playing in a major key I'm calling that one the first position. Okay, so that's one way of improvising. You can just play the scale that relates to the chord. Another way is we can play in key. Now this is much easier when you first start because you don't have to keep changing scales with every chord change. So let's say I'm in the key of A minor. I could use A minor, B diminished, C, D minor, E minor, F or the G chord. So you can record yourself playing say A minor, E minor, F and G, just a bar of each. Then because I'm in the key of A minor, I can play all the five positions of the A minor pentatonic scales over the chords. Now some notes will sound better than others depending on the chord behind the note, but we don't have to worry too much. You're just getting used to hearing how it sounds. Now this will work most of the time, and the more you practice it, the easier it is to find the right notes. So let's put that little chord progression on A minor, E minor, F, G, and hear how the scales sound over the top of that. A minor, first position, second position, third, fourth, fifth. some of the basic things we can do now. scales work in the key of A minor and we just played the scales first and then we just did some of those simple licks again and some different ways to move through it so using some of our octave pentatonics our licks and just joining those together and putting parts of the scales together as well there. Now if the chords are in a major key we can do exactly the same thing so let's play G, C, D and G so we're now just in the key of G major. So starting with our first position, G major. Second position. And you can play through those at home just to hear how they sound. If we want to do some improvising there again. So 
just using the different scales to play different notes in that key. Now if you're just starting to improvise and you're finding that too hard, just start with four notes of the first position A minor pentatonic scale. So I'm going to start on my D string, play the 5, 7 and on the G string 5, 7. And let's see how many ways you can put that together. Now you don't have to keep playing the whole time, you can repeat notes, hold notes, use bends, repeat phrases. Once you feel comfortable doing that, start adding in more notes. So you can start to use the licks, the octave scales, the scale patterns and moving between the scales. So let's just try those four notes. So I'm just using the A minor chord progression again and just playing those four notes. solo rather than just playing the scales up and down and we can come up with something tasteful with four notes remember we don't have to keep playing the whole time and come up with different little phrases and different licks you can use there when you feel more comfortable doing that start to add in extra strings and extra scales so when you start putting all the techniques together it starts to sound like a solo not just a scale now this is really hard when you first start but like everything if you practice it becomes easier so that's just a quick look at improvising. You can do lots of lessons just on that subject, but we'll leave that for another day. So this is more for you to see how you can use the scales. So just a quick tip there, to know what key a song is in, it's normally the first or the last chord. Now that doesn't always work, but it gives you a starting point. So about chord progression starting on A minor, we're probably in the key of A minor. Now like I said, that doesn't always work, but it will work a fair bit of the time. Now we can also join the pentatonic scales together and one way of doing this is to take the first note of one of the positions and the second note of the next position on each string. So we'll do this in the key of E minor, it's a little bit easier, the stretches aren't quite as big. So my first position and my second position and now I'm just going to play, join the two of them together there. Now the only problem with this one, and you can get some weird things happening, which is good as well, we're repeating the notes, that note and that note, the second and the third note we're playing are the same, and that happens down through the scales, but you can come up with some interesting patterns there, so, so let's go through those five shapes as well. So joining the first and the second position, we have 12th fret 17 on the E, on the A, 12, 17. On the D, 12, 17. On the G, 12, 16. And then B, 12, 17. E, 12, 17. The only one different there is the G string. And we can use our patterns with those as well. I'll say a group of threes. So you can get some different sounds there. So let's go through the other scales now as well. I could take my fifth position and join it to my first. So this time we have 10 on the E, 15 on the E. Coming to the A string, we have 10 and 14 there. D string, 9 and 14. G string, 9 and 14. On the B string, we have 10 and 15, and on the E string, 10 and 15, and coming back is exactly the same there. Now you can also join these to your normal pentatonic scales as well if you want. Let's go back again, now let's join the fourth position with the fifth. Mm -hmm. 
So now we have on the E string, we have seven and 12. On the A string, seven and 12. D string, seven and 12. G string, seven and 12. Then on the B string, eight and 12. And E string, seven and 12. So that's a nice, easy one to remember there. So joining the third and fourth, we have five and 10 on the E string. A string the same, five, 10. D string, five, nine. G string, four, nine. B string, five, 10. And E string, five, 10 there. Coming back's the same, so let's do that one now. So. so they're getting a little bit harder now, the stretches are bigger and bigger. And the last one we'll do is joining the second and the third, but we'll come up the neck for this one. So we have 15 and 19 on the E string, on the A string, 14, 19, D string, 14, 19, G string, 14, 19, on the B string, 15, 20, and on the E string, 15, 19, and coming back is the same. So let's play that through as well. So coming up the neck for that one. Now you can try that back down the neck as well. So that's just combining the pentatonic scales together with big stretches there, but it give you some unique sounds with your play. So we have another five scales we can use to make our solos and to make them sound a little bit different. Okay, this next section will be on three note per string pentatonic scales. Don't try these until you feel comfortable with all the other scales and patterns we have done. It'll also help if you've done a few three note per string scales because these will have big stretches in them. Now I'll do these in the key of E minor. So let's make a start. So these are easy to work out but can be tricky to play. All we do is join two adjacent pentatonic scales together. So similar to the stretch pentatonic scales we did, but this time we'll play all the notes of each scale. So we'll end up with another five scales. So let's go through them now. So this time we'll join the first and the second positions together. So starting on the E string, we have 12, 15, 17. A string, 12, 14, 17. Same on the D string, 12, 14, 17. On the G string, 12, 14, 16. B string, 12, 15, 17. And the E string, 12, 15, 17. And coming back is exactly the same there. So this is similar to our stretch pentatonics. We have a repeating note with the last note on each string and the first note of the next string. play that one more time up to speed. So now let's join the fifth position and the first position together. We play that for you, then we'll break it down. So starting on the E string we have 10, 12, 15. On the A string we have 10, 12, 14. On the D string, 9, 12 and 14. G string 9, 12 and 14, B string 10, 12 and 15, and E string 10, 12 and 15, and coming back there again is exactly the same. So that's joining the fifth and the first position. So let's do that one more time. And now let's join the fourth with the fifth. So let me play that for you. Then we'll break it down. So this time starting on the seventh fret, we have seven, ten, twelve, A string, seven, ten, twelve, D string, seven, nine, twelve, G string, seven, nine, twelve. On the B string we have eight, ten, twelve, and then on the E string we go back to the seven. 10, 12, and coming back is exactly the same. There. Let's do that one more time, up to speed. Now let's join 
the third with the fourth. So we play that for you. So now starting on the fifth fret on the E string, we have five, seven, ten. A string, five, seven, ten. On the D string, we have five, seven, nine. On the G string, we have four, seven, nine. On the B string, we have five, eight, and ten. And on the E string, we have five, seven, ten. And that's our third and fourth position, so let's play that one more time. And the last one we have is joining the second and the third together. Now you can do that right down here, but let's move it up the neck to make it a little bit easier. So let me play that for you, then we'll go through it. So this time starting on the 15th fruit, we have 15, 17, 19 on the E string. On the A string, 14, 17, 19. Same on the D, 14, 17, 19. On the G string, we have 14, 16, 19. On the B string, 15, 17, 20. And on the E string, 15, 17. Coming up to 19 there, and coming back's the same. So let's do that one more time, up to speed. <laughs> So now you know five different three note per string patterns as well, and you can take those and use your patterns you do with say your major scars or your harmonic minors as well. So you could use say a group of sixes. And you can also join your other patterns there. Now that we can do these, we can also use them as octaves as well. So let's do a couple of those, and there's another five of those, and you can work them out. We'll just do a couple. So this time we're going to start on the 5th fret, play 5, 7 and 10 on the E string, same on the A string, 5, 7, 10. Then we're going to move up on the D string and we're going to play 7, 9, 12, same on the G string, 7, 9, 12. And then we're going to move up to the B string, 10, 12, 15, E string, 10, 12, 15 and it's the same coming back down. There. So you can see I've just done six notes and then done the octave of those. Exactly the same what we did with the pentatonics there. So let's play that one more time. And we can move that up and do the same thing again. So let me play the next one for you. So this time starting on the seventh fret, we have seven, 10, 12. On the E string, A string, 7, 10, 12. On the D string, we're moving up, we have 9, 12, 14. Same on the G string, 9, 12, 14. Then on the B string, we have 12, 15, 17, and the E string the same, 12, 15, 17, and coming back is the same. There, let's do that one more time, up to speed. And again, with those ones, you can use your patterns as well. So that gives you another five using the octaves there. Now the biggest problem with these scars is you're repeating a note each time you change strings. Not so much with the octave ones, but the other ones we are. So they do sound a little disjointed. So we can just play the notes of the scale without repeating a note, and we'll be playing diagonally up the neck. So let's try a couple of those as well. So starting on the third fret on the E string, and then the fifth fret on the E string, seventh fret on the E string, then on the A string we have five, seven, and ten. On the D string, seven, nine, and ten. Then on the G string, 9, 12, 14. On the B string, 12, 15, 17. On the E string, 15, 17, 19. And coming back is the same. So let's do that one more time, up to speed. So then this next one, let me play it for you, then we'll break it down. 
start on the 5th fret on the E string and have 7 and 10 on the A string, 7, 10, 12 on the D string, 9, 12, 14 on the G string, 12, 14, 16 on the B string, 15, 17, 20 and on the E string, 17, 19, 22 there and coming back is the same. So let's do that one more time up to speed. And let's do some alternate ways of playing them as well. So now let's try this one, let me show you, then we'll break it down. So starting on the E string, we have 7, 10. On the A string, 7, 9, 10. And then we're just going to do the octave of those. The, D string 9, 12, G string 9, 11, 12, B string 12, 15, and E string 12, 14, 15, and coming back is the same there. So let's do that up to speed. And this last one, we're just looking at a different way to join it together, sort of adding the major notes in as well. So we play that for you. So this time we're starting on the 5th fret, we play 5, 7 and 10 on the E string and then on the A string 7, 9 and 10 and then we're just doing that in octaves. So we're going to come up to the D string, we're going to play 7, 9, 12 and then G string 9, 11, 12 and then on the B string we're going to play 10, 12, 15 and on the E string, 12, 14, 15, and coming back is exactly the same. So that one's a little bit more confusing. And one more time, up to speed. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you got lots of different ideas you can use in your play. Now I know there's a lot there but just take your time and learn a little bit each week and slowly build up your speed with each scale. So don't forget to subscribe and give the lesson a like and I'll see you soon.